live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE, covering AWS Executive Summit. Brought to you by Accenture. Welcome back everyone to theCUBE's live coverage of the Accenture Executive Summit here at AWS reInvent. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight. I'm joined by Tristan morel Lorset. He is the Managing Director, North America Intelligence Cloud and Infrastructure. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Thanks for having me, Rebecca. So, I know that your primary focus is cloud management and optimization. Tell our viewers why, why those are two critical things. There are two very important things. The cloud is wonderful. It's full of innovation, it's, it evolves all the time, it's wonderful for developers, they love to leverage this. But there's broad implications for IT departments. IT departments are used to buy in big bulk IT services every three years, they park it, and then they renew that five years later. Um, so from how do you constantly consume the cloud in an innovative way. And additionally, while the developers are enjoying the, the services, at the enterprise level, there's broad implications on the tools, the skill sets, the load that you're putting on the infrastructure, on the network, on the security. And so, you really have to benefit of the cloud to benefit of all the innovation. You have to take a step back and say, what does it mean to run in the cloud and to manage and optimize it. And that's why we call it run different, because you have to take it completely from the ground up and rethink it. Okay, so run different. Describe what this means, what, what, this, what this is. So we look at run different as five core pillars. First, you have to manage it, of course, and that doesn't go away. Because you put an application in the cloud doesn't mean you don't manage it. So you have to manage it, the tools, et cetera. You have to optimize it. Uh, optimization, if cloud is all about innovation, and every day and this morning we heard all sorts of new innovations come out, from quantum computing to contextualized AI to new types of storage, you now have to onboard this into your environment. How do you optimize it? Uh, the third is you have to consume it. So you have to consume differently. It's completely changed, procurement departments have to adapt to it. The security framework has to evolve, and finally, the governance across all of the cloud that you're consuming at the enterprise level has to change. And those five pillars are critical to what we mean by run different. So we're going to get into all of these in just a second, but I'm, you're, the premise is that the old way of doing IT doesn't work anymore. So when you explain this, this approach and this strategy of thinking in this new way, is there any pushback? I mean, so much of technology and new strategies and approaches is not necessarily the technology itself. It's the, it's the change management, it's the people. So right. is, with the implication that your way is not going to cut it anymore, it's wrong, how is it, how is it understood in the organizations that it's you work with? In many cases, not understood. Because in many cases, people look at the individual technology and how am I using this individual technology? And um, this morning, as of this morning, a lot of clients were looking at how do I use these widgets that I use? That's not the point. The point is, if I'm there, I am go the belief of why I'm moving in the cloud is not for one particular capability, but the belief that the capabilities are going to get better over time, better operationally, so developers are going to get new features, and by the way, better financially. Because if I'm using the right innovation, financially it gets better over time. So you're moving from a, a very static environment, applications that don't move, to a very dynamic environment. And that is a complete shift in mindset. It's a shift in mindset for the developers, for the people managing applications, for procurement departments, who now have to buy something every day. Um, and so the change management of the enterprise is very complex. Because, by the way, you can't completely over-rotate. Just because you're moving a SAP application to the cloud doesn't mean you don't manage it anymore, you still have to make sure that ERP system is operating properly. So that's what we mean by a multi-mode operating model, is across the spectrum, you still have to have the more traditional management, but you have to evolve it on an ongoing basis. And that is a complete shift. Your workforce has to change all the time. This morning, CIO should have woken up and said, how am I going to use ultra warm? I now need skills on that. I now need tools on that. Um, and so that's a complete shift which is very difficult for enterprise at a large scale to adapt to and to embrace. 
but they have to, if they do not, they won't benefit from the cloud. So let's let's go through these things. So let's start with cloud management services. Tell it tell us or tell our viewers a little bit about that. So cloud management, the wonderful thing about the cloud is you can automate it. And so you can now automate the resolution of incidents. Frankly, we don't care about incident management anymore. If something fails, we just spin something else up and it resolves itself. So it's much more about how do you make sure that things are automated so that there's no human intervention? From a, when something goes really wrong and you need to do problem management, you now need different set of skills. So instead of having the old network skill and storage skill and operating system skill, I need an AWS platform skill. Somebody that can engineer the application from top to bottom, full stack engineer on that platform. That's a completely different type of skill, number one. And number two, has to evolve over time. So how are the engineers at any client or IT department are going to learn about how to manage the new quantum computing that we heard about this morning? Uh, or wavelength and, and enable 5G. So those skills not only have to be different and platform enabled, but they have to evolve over time. And so managing the cloud, that is still requires skills and tools, but that have to evolve and change over time. So as you said, CIOs and CEOs are, are saying, wow, I have a lot of work to do to make sure my workforce is up to speed. Um, cloud optimization services. Yes. You said that so was next. So that to me is the fundamental shift. If management over time, hopefully it fully is automated and that function shrinks to almost zero. What now becomes is cloud is available to all the developers. The problem is they're consuming it as much as they want. So you now have to shift from fixing a problem to fixing the consumption. Am I making sure that, am I using the right type of service? So instead of having a uh, EC2 instance uh, on a, and a database, am I using RDS? Instead of RDS, am I using Lambda? Instead of Lambda, am I using Fargate? Um, so am I using the right type of service for my application and for my business? And that is constant optimization to drive the right service. And when I'm consuming too much, am I identifying that consumption event? Um, very recent example, uh, a client of mine explained to me how at Christmas, one of his developers left a key out in the open. Somebody used that key to spin up a bunch of AWS instance to mine Bitcoin. Now, that's not a incident. The system's working fine as advertised. So it's not a incident in the real idle term, it's an incident in the terms of, it's a consumption event that I have to catch and identify. That is the shift. You have to manage the consumption in real time, not the incident in real time. And that's what optimization is all about. And, but, the, but then there's an, another consumption element to it too. There is, because um, procurement departments used to buy things on an annual basis. Sometimes if every five years they would paint a wall with a bunch of hardware and leave it sitting in their data center. Now, they're buying things every month. If you take Accenture, for example, every month we have 900 million lines of bills for our cloud providers. Now Excel only processes, what, 64,000? You have to have special tools. How do you reconcile this? How do you translate these bills back to the application owner so that they, they drive the right consumption? How do you align it back to the business? All of those are new features of the procurement department that has to exist in the IT department to deal with the cloud. So next is security, and this is of course on every CIO's mind right now. How do you ensure security compliance? Um, compliance, but also secure, it's secure. So how is it secure, and how do you ensure security compliance? Um, the great things about the cloud, new capabilities, have security embedded. Unfortunately, clients, realize that they can't outsource uh, security. That is always a responsibility that's a board level responsibility that the CIOs are accountable for. So how do you relate the security component that is in the cloud uh, versus the security component that you're still responsible for as a CIO? And the default security features and configurations of the cloud services may or may not be aligned to your own security policies. So as you're using the cloud, you have to align their security 
to your, um, your IT estate's policies and you have to monitor it in real time. So it becomes a monitoring of the security feature and how it's complementary to your policies as opposed to driving end-to-end -end security individually for every widget. Uh, it evolves over time and as your developers consume new services, you don't have control over that, but you have to monitor it so that you can address any shortfalls as they, as they come and as you identify them. So the final element of this, this approach is uh, cloud governance. How do you define this? So cloud governance, um, what's, what's fascinating, and one of the big lessons learned from this morning actually is, you are not going to go to AWS to be public cloud. You're going to AWS for the cloud. With Outpost now being generally available, you may go to AWS for private or public, and now by the way for quantum as well. So even if you have one primary cloud provider, and let's say it's AWS or, or another, you have to manage multiple cloud platforms and you have to govern it across the platforms. Developers don't care where they're consuming it. They just want it available. And that governance across all the AWS clouds, in most cases multi-clouds, is critical to get that total visibility of your entire estate. And so that's why that fifth pillar is critical and a foundation of all the others. So this is, this is really interesting. Can you give us some examples of clients that you are already using this approach and, and how it's having an impact on their businesses? Yeah, so we're using this approach at all of our clients. So we fundamentally believe that is how you have to manage it and it's no longer just a fixing the incidents, it truly is about automating and optimizing. Um, I think the best example is Accenture. We've moved 95% of our estate in the cloud. For your own use case. We are, and, and I could name a lot of clients, but Accenture is our best example because we run the risk in being in the cloud to completely over-consume, and when we spend you know, hundreds of millions in the cloud, you have to manage that very, very carefully. Are you using the latest kit buildings? Are you consuming it properly? And how are we dealing with the bills? In fact, this framework was built on the lessons learned from our clients, but really from what we did internally to Accenture. So other than implementing run differently stat, what is your best advice for organizations that are really looking to have a more organized and systematic approach to this? Yeah, I think, um, clients will have to, one, every client's on a big cloud journey, and I think what we're seeing is clients are accelerating their cloud journey. Um, they have to make a real decision. Run different is a framework, which we advise client either they can do it themselves and they have to adopt this, this concept, or they can use a third party. The, important concept is if you want to benefit from the cloud, it evolves. If you are investing in your tools and your skill sets, we will absolutely support it and encourage it, but you have to understand that that is an ongoing investment. Every year you have to update your platform. Every year you have to update your skills. So some clients are fully committing to that, are technology companies at the core, and are making those investments. Other clients realize that that is something they would prefer to use a third party for, and they come to a, a number of providers, including Accenture. Great, well Tristan, thank you so much for coming on the show. A really absolutely. interesting conversation. Thank you so much, Rebecca. I'm Rebecca Knight, stay tuned for more of theCUBE's live coverage of the Accenture Executive Summit.